So when we're working with PowerShell, we tend to run it as an interactive session. It's a single tasking uh, operating or a single tasking shell. So what we mean by that is when I run a command, let's say get service, it executes the command right away, and then I don't interact with the shell again until that particular process finishes. So it immediately displays it, but I can't do more than one thing at a time. Each job has to complete before I can execute the next job. Now, PowerShell does have the ability to do background jobs and multitasking. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. Some commandlets have the parameter as job. And let's, let me show you how to pull up a list of those. So I'm going to clear and I'm going to do get help for every command. And I'm going to look for the parameter. as job parameter as job and so that will search help for any commandlet that has the parameter as job and here you can see the list of them that does and big one on this list is the invoke command commandlet and remember invoke command we use for uh, running commands on local or especially remote computers but we can use that invoke command to do anything as a background job by doing the as job parameter. Now there's another way to do, do it, and that is using a series of commandlets that are related or that have the noun job. So I'm going to do get command noun job. And you're going to see here get job, receive job, remove job, resume job, start job, stop job, suspend. Wait. All right, let's start with the start job and this is a very common way to start something as a background job so any of these have the as job parameter and I can just do this dash as job but for things that don't then we can use start job and the way it works is we do start job and actually let me do get help on that real quick get help for start job pipe that to more and here we'll see the parameters so the biggest one right here is going to be the script block and that's going to be the job that we are go or the process the command that we want to execute now script block is the parameter name it's a positional parameter this is what we're actually taking is the system management automation script block and we talked about that with the invoke command commandlet that means we're going to put the script block or the command inside curly brackets and that's what uh, is going to run and then you'll see all the other options here um, another common one that people use is the name where we can set the name for the job now let me show you how this is going to work. We just did the get service command, right? And everything runs, and then we can interact with the shell again once the get service is done. All right, I can do that as a job. So I'm going to do start job, and then in my script block, so open curly brackets, get service. Provided I can spell service correctly. Now, this immediately gets back to me. And you'll notice here we have job ID 1. Job name is job 1. I didn't specify a name, so it does a really generic one. It's a background job, and the current state of that job was running. Now, it's probably finished by now, but that's okay. Normally, you would do this with a job that is going to take a lot of time. So, it's currently running. I can update that here in a minute. Has more data. This means that there's more information that we can view about the job. And then the location and then the command that was actually ran. Okay, this is job ID 1. So if I want more information about the jobs or list my current jobs, I'll use the command get job. And you'll see job ID 1 now is completed. Now, Using get job, that's going to get information about the job or it's going to list the jobs for me. So I do get job, it lists all of my available jobs. Let's do another one here just to give us an example. Let's do start job and we'll do get process. All right, now let me do a get job. And you're going to see I have job 1, job 3. At the time I ran this, job 1 was completed, job 2 was running. Over here it shows me the command. And you may not, I mean, if the command is very long, you won't see the whole thing. But you can 
output this as a format list and you can display more of it that way now notice by the way this is job one job three we skip job two it's because these are primary jobs and each primary job is going to have at least one sub job so now if i want to let me do my let's clear the screen to move this up i'm going to do a get job again and you're going to see that now job one and job three have both completed so if i want to display the results of the job i'm going to use the command receive job there we go receive job and then I'm going to specify the job that I want and I can do it by name or by ID I always go by ID because there's less typing involved so I want to receive job one I'm gonna go ahead and pipe that through more and that's going to give me the results of the job and we'll get all the way through that so that information was there for me to receive whenever I wanted so I do a, a start job that runs the job's background. I can then monitor it using get job and I can see when it's done and then I can display the information using receive job. Now, when you do that though, let me do a get job again and you're going to see now job one has more data is false. Before it was true before I received the job. When you receive the job, what happens is it basically empties out that job. It gets rid of all of the data. Now you can keep that data if you want to reference back to it later, which is actually really useful. So the way we do that is we do, I'm going to do this with job three. Actually, let me receive job one and show you first what I'm talking about. I go to receive job one, there's nothing left there. Now if I receive job three, I'm going to do a dash keep. And what that does is that tells PowerShell, show me the data but don't clear it after you show it to me. So I do my keep, there it is, I have all of my data. Now when I do my get job, notice that job three still has more uh, data to display. Now I can also get rid of specific jobs once I'm done with them. So I can issue the command remove job I had to think for a minute there remove job number one and that gets rid of it so now when I do a get job it's just not there anymore so if I wanted that service information but I want to be able to reference back to it again let me start job and job is going to be get service all right, now if I do a get job, and notice by the way, when you start a job, it will display the new job, it won't display all jobs. So when I do a get job, it'll show me job three and job five. Now if I receive job number five, but I tell it to keep the data, it'll show me the information, and then when I do my get job, you'll see that I still have that information. Okay. Now, what type of objects are these? Let's do this. Let's do receive job five, and we're going to pipe that to get member, and then I'm going to pipe that to more. You're going to see that this is a deserialized service controller. And if you remember, we have the same issue when we're dealing with uh, executing jobs on remote computers. We gather the information, we serialize it, we send it across the network, we deserialize it, we put it back together in something that looks like a service controller object, but it's a deserialized object. And remember, anything that's deserialized isn't a live object. It was a snapshot at a point in time. So I can't take the output of one of these objects, you know, get the results of this job, look for a specific service, pipe that to stop service. It's a not an actual service controller object. It's a deserialized service controller object. So I lose some of that functionality. But on the other hand, I now get to keep that information in my jobs and reference back to it whenever I want. All right. Why will we do this? Well, we'll do this if we're running commandlets that are going to take a while. And most of what we've done so far in our little demos have been pretty short, right? I mean, we've, we've made some long commandlets, but they've all executed pretty quickly. They don't... Uh, we haven't had things that are going to take an extended period of time. 
However, if I am going to do something that is going to take an extended period of time, I might not want to sit here and wait for this to just go forever and ever and ever. So I'll assign it to a background job. And then I'll just be able to reference back to this background job using my get job, see when it's completed, and then I can get the results from it. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let's do a get command here real quick with noun job. And let me point out some key ones here. Get job we've talked about. Get job shows you the current jobs you have in the system. Receive job lets you view the results of the job. Remove job gets rid of a job. Suspend job will pause it. So if you have something that's going for a while and you think it might be hung up for some reason, you can actually pause the job. And then resume will let you resume the job. Start stops one, stop, terminates a job, you can debug job. So these are all of your commandlets for working with these background jobs. Now one other thing about dealing with a background job, if a background job generates an error, you don't always see that information because the error isn't displayed on the screen. You'll just see that it completed and you might not have the data there. The other thing is if you run something as a background job that requires user interaction, it will fail. And so a very common thing here that we'll do is we'll uh, do a commandlet that requires a mandatory parameter. And we forget to put in the parameter. And if we do that, what's going to happen when we run it interactively is it will pop up and say, hey, give me this data. You need a parameter here. And so we have the option to put that in and then execute the commandlet. Well, with a background job, because it doesn't run interactively, you can't do that. So what we'll typically do is we will test the job, test whatever command or whatever command process we want to do. We'll test it interactively, and then once we know it works, then we can run it in the future as a background job and let it process in the background and then just pull it to the foreground whenever we want. The other useful purpose for... Uh, jobs is to capture the state of a system and then be able to refer back to it later. Now, that raises one other issue. Your jobs only stay in memory for as long as your session is open. Once you close your session, all the jobs that were associated with that session are gone. So you can't put information in a job, close PowerShell, come back in, open PowerShell up later on, and then retrieve receive those jobs. Once you close your PowerShell session, it's gone. If I open up a new PowerShell session, so right now I've got get job, I've got two jobs there. Let me go ahead and open up another PowerShell session. Run as administrator. Authorize it to work. Get job. This session has no jobs available. This one over here still does. My jobs are associated with my PowerShell sessions. Okay, hopefully that gives you an idea of how we can work with background jobs in PowerShell.